welcome to week 10 of NFL predictions. My name is Seidel and I'm going over each game this week and predicting who wins and who loses. We got a lot of interesting games this week, so let's just get into it. Starting with the 5-3 Indianapolis Colts facing the 6-2 Tennessee Titans. Colts had a big loss against the Ravens, 24-10 last week. And the Titans had a close victory over the Bears, 24-17. The Titans offense has done really well this season, averaging 29 points a game. And Ryan Tannehill has 19 touchdowns to only three interceptions. Uh, they do have a lot of injuries, though, and including their top receiver, A.J. Brown, who is questionable this week. He has six touchdowns and almost 500 yards on the season. But I think the biggest factor in this game is going to be the Colts' defense, and, and especially their run defense. They only allow 83 yards on average a game rushing. Uh, with only 20 points total allowed a game. So I think if the Colts' defense can can hold Derrick Henry to under 100 yards, then I think they have a good shot at winning this. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to say the Colts win 24-21 to over the Titans. And now we have the 7-2 Buffalo Bills taking on the 5-3 Arizona Cardinals. The Bills are coming off of a three-game win streak and a big win over the Seahawks, 44-34. to And the Cardinals are coming off of a close loss to the Dolphins, 34-31. to and Josh Allen's having a phenomenal season for the Bills. 19 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 20, over 2,500 yards. On the other side, Kyler Murray's also having a solid season this year with 16 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and over 2,100 yards. The Bills do have a lot of injuries, though, and especially at the cornerback position. I think that's going to play a major role in this game, especially with Kyler Murray's ability to extend plays and be able to scramble with the ball. I do think it's going to be a close one, but I'm going to go with the Cardinals 24-21. I think, it's, I think it could be a last-second field goal, but I'm going to go with the Cardinals on this one. Now we have the 2-6 Houston Texans taking on the 5-3 Cleveland Browns. The Texans are coming off of a close 27-25 victory over the Jaguars, and the Browns are coming off of a bye week. And Deshaun Watson's having a pretty solid season this year, 17 touchdowns and only 5 interceptions, over 2,300 yards passing. Uh, it's their defense that's really been holding the back, allowing 30 points and over 430 yards on average a game. On the other side, Baker Mayfield's having a pretty good season this year. 15 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and a little over 1,500 yards. But especially their rush game this year, this year, averaging 150 yards on uh, on average a game. I don't think the Texans' defense is going to be able to keep up. I'm going to go with the Browns on this one. I'm going to say Browns win 30-25 to over the Texans. And now we have 2-6 Washington taking on the 3-5 Detroit Lions. Washington is coming off of a close 23-20 loss to the Giants. And the Lions are coming off of a big 34-20 loss to the Vikings. I think this is going to be an interesting game because Washington's offense has struggled quite a lot this year. Only averaging 19 points and a little over 330 yards a game. On the other hand... The Lions' defense has struggled a lot, averaging 30 or allowing 30 points and over 400 yards on average a game. Also, the Lions' offense has been pretty good this year, averaging 24 points and over 370 yards a game. On the other hand, the Wa uh, Washington's defense has done pretty good, only only allowing 23 points and a little under 340 yards on average a game. But with Washington's QB situation and Kyle Allen being hurt, uh, even though the Lions do have a lot of injuries this week. I'm going to go with the Lions 28-21 to over Washington. And now we have the 1-6 Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the 6-2 Green Bay Packers. The Jaguars almost had their first win since week 1, but they came up short to the Texans 27-25. to And the Packers had a big win over the 49ers 34-17. to And with Aaron Rodgers having a phenomenal season, 24 touchdowns to only 2 interceptions and over 2,200 yards. And their offense has been one of the best in the league, averaging 31 points and over 400 yards a game. And with the Jaguars' defense struggling as it has been with allowing over 30 points and over 420 yards a game, I don't think this is going to be a much of a, a close game. I'm going to go with the Packers, 35-24 to over the Jaguars. And now we have the 3-4-1 Philadelphia Eagles taking on the 2-7 New York Giants. The Eagles are coming off of a big 23-9 win over the Dallas Cowboys, and the Giants are coming off of their second win over Washington, 23-20, and both offenses are struggling with turnovers this year, especially at the QB position. Carson Wentz has 12 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, and Daniel Jones has 8 touchdowns to 9 interceptions, so both teams struggling with turnovers, but the Giants' defense does have a good rush defense, only allowing 94 rushing yards a game. 
but their offense has struggled to put points up on the board, averaging 18 points a game. On the other hand, the Eagles offense has done a lot better this year, averaging 23 points a game, and both defenses being pretty similar. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Eagles on this one. The Giants have a lot of injuries this week as well. I'm going to go with the Eagles 26-17 to over the Giants. And now we have the 6-3 and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the 3-6 and six Carolina Panthers. The Buccaneers are coming off of a bad 38-3 loss from the Saints. And the Panthers are coming off of a four-game losing streak and a loss to the Kansas City Chiefs 33-31. The Buccaneers offense did struggle a lot with Brady throwing three interceptions against the Saints. But their defense also struggled allowing 38 points in that game. Their offense still is one of the best in the league, though, averaging 27 points and 350 yards. And Tom Brady is also having a solid season with 20 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, almost 2,400 yards. Uh, I do think this is going to be a somewhat close game. And the Panthers did almost come out with a win against the Chiefs, but they just came out just short. I'm going to go with the Buccaneers, though, 27-22. to I think, they, I think they pick it up after last week against the Saints, and I think they pull out a win. And now we have the 3-5 Denver Broncos taking on the 5-3 Las Vegas Raiders. The Broncos are coming off of a loss from the Falcons, 34-27. And the Raiders are coming off of a big win over the Chargers, 31-26. Both defenses have struggled quite a bit this season. The Broncos allowing 27 points to the Raiders, 28 points a game. And also allowing 378 yards to the Raiders, 392 yards allowed a game. So both defenses have been pretty similar this year, but the Raiders' offense has been significantly better than the Broncos, averaging 27 points to the Broncos, 22 points, and the Broncos only averaging 357 yards to the Raiders, 381 yards on offense a game. And Derek Carr is having a great season this year, 16 touchdowns to only two interceptions, and over and just over 2,000 yards passing. On the other hand, Drew Locke has struggled a lot this year with six touchdowns and six interceptions and just over 1,200 yards passing. Uh, I do think it's going to be a really close game, but I'm going to go with the Raiders on this one. I think they moved to 6-3, and three, and I think they beat the Broncos 28-27 to 27 in a really close game. And now we have the 2-6 and six Los Angeles Chargers taking on the 5-3 and three Miami Dolphins. The Chargers are coming off of a loss from the Raiders, 31-26, to 26, and the Dolphins are coming off of a four-game win streak and a huge win over the Cardinals, 34-31. And the Dolphins' offense has been really good this year, averaging 27 points and a little over 330 yards a game. On the other hand, the Chargers' offense has also been really good this year, averaging 25 points a game and over 430 yards a game. Uh, the Dolphins' defense has been pretty good this year also, averaging 20 points allowed a game. On the other hand, the Chargers' defense has struggled a bit, allowing 27 points a game. And Tua Tagovailoa did do a lot better against the Cardinals than he did in his first start against the Rams. Uh, I think the Dolphins do continue to roll. I think I'm going to go with the Dolphins, 31-24. to I think it's going to be a really competitive game, but I'm going to go with the Dolphins in this one. And now we have the 2-6 Seattle Seahawks taking on the 5-3 LA Rams. The Seahawks are coming off of a big loss from the Bills, 44-34. And the Rams are also coming off of a loss from, from the Dolphins, 28-27. The Seahawks offense has been probably the best in the league, averaging 34 points and 434 yards a game, led by Russell Wilson with 28 touchdowns and 8 interceptions, also, also has over 2,500 yards. Uh, on the other hand, Jared Goff is also having a solid season, 13 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, over 2,100 yards passing. But the Seahawks defense has struggled a lot this year, averaging 466 yards allowed a game with 30 points allowed a game. On the other hand, the Rams defense has been really good in this year, averaging 19 points and only 312 yards on average a game. I do think it's going to be really close, but I'm going to go with the Seahawks and their offense in this one. I think they win 30-28. to I think this one could be a shootout, but I'm going to go with the Seahawks in this one. And now we have the 4-5 49ers taking on the 6-2 New Orleans Saints. 49ers are coming off of a big 34-17 loss to the Packers. And the Saints are coming off of a 5-game win streak and a big win over the Buccaneers, 38-3. And their offense has been top in the league this year, averaging 30 points and almost 400 yards a game. And Drew Brees having a great season, 17 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, over 2,100 yards on the season. Their defense has also been really good, uh, averaging 25 points and 331 yards 
on average allowed a game. On the other hand, the 49ers have been pretty solid on both sides of the ball, uh, especially on defense, only allowing 23 points a game and 334 yards on average a game. So actually a little bit better than the Saints. And their offense has been pretty good, but they have been on and off at times on the season. Averaging, but they do average 25 points a game and th almost 400 yards on average a game. I'm going to go with the Saints on this one. I do think it's going to be another close game. I think there's a lot of close games this week. But I'm going to go with Drew Brees and the Saints. I think they win with a last second field goal, 28-25 to over the 49ers. And now we have the two 5-1 Cincinnati Bengals taking on the 8-0 Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bengals had a big win over the Tennessee Titans last week, 31-20. to And the Steelers had a close win over the Cowboys, 24-19. to And the Steelers have been really solid on both sides of the ball this year, averaging 29 points on offense and only allowing 20 points on defense with 344 yards allowed on defense as well. Uh, on the other hand, the Bengals have been really on and off this season, especially on offense, averaging 24 points and 387 yards a game. And their defense has allowed over 400 yards on average a game as well. But Joe Burrow has had a pretty solid season with 11 touchdowns and 5 interceptions and over 2,200 yards. The Bengals are a team that can show up out of nowhere with an upset. But I'm going to go with the Steelers. Uh, I think they win big. I think they win 34-21 to over the Bengals. And now we have the 6-2 Baltimore Ravens taking on the 3-5 New England Patriots. The Ravens are coming off of a big 24-10 win over the Indianapolis Colts. And the Patriots are coming off of a much-needed win over the Jets, 30-27, to after being on a four-game four losing streak. Uh, the Lamar Jackson's having a great season this year. Not the best passing numbers with only 12 touchdowns, four interceptions, and only 1,500 yards. But he does lead their team in rushing yards with 470 yards and three touchdowns on the year. Their, their defense has also been one of the best in the league with only 17 points allowed a game and 347 yards allowed a game as well. The Patriots offense has struggled a lot, especially Cam Newton with only two touchdowns and seven interceptions, 1,400 yards on the year, and their offense only only averaging 20 points a game. Their defense has been pretty good this year, only allowing 24 points and 363 yards a game. Um, I don't think it's going to be much of a close game. I'm going to go with the Ravens, 28-18 to over the New England Patriots. And now we have the 3-5 Minnesota Vikings taking on the 5-4 Chicago Bears. Both teams are coming off of a bye week, but the Bears' offense has struggled a lot this year, only averaging 19 points and 330 yards a game. Nick Foles is having a decent season, though. 10 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, a little over 1,700 yards passing. On the, other hand, on the other hand, Kirk Cousins has 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, with 1,800 yards passing. Um, the Vikings offense has been a lot better, averaging, averaging 27 points and almost 400 yards a game. Uh, but the Bears defense has been a lot better, averaging 21 points and 349 yards compared to the Vikings, allowing 422 yards on average a game and almost 30 points a game. Uh, I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to say the Bears win 26 to 22 over the Vikings. Thank you for watching and don't forget to post your predictions in the comments below and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Uh, but thank you for watching and I will see you next time.